takes the variable type okay okay it automatically takes the variable type okay first thing you have to understand how to open this collab repository uh, collab thing collab notebook so opening this collab notebook is not that tough you have to go to so i'll leave, leave this page and I, i'll show you you have to go to collab.research.google.com and after going there you will be greeted with this uh, window so you can see the the window shows you examples and uh, recents google drive and github you can also connect your github repository and uh, okay so when you connect the github repository all those notebooks in your repository are shown here and you will show uploads you can also upload the ipnb file so uh, this file is generally used so ip ipynb file is a file format using which you can okay so yeah so ipynb is an interactive python file or uh, when you are using jupyter so basically you do all those coding in this interactive console so all this code and the result of the code is stored in kind of a file so I, if you go and have a good look uh, if you have a good look into an ipnb file you will see that it stores everything so if i go to so if i go to any one of the ipnb file okay no books if i see the row so basically you can see it stores all the informations um, I mean, if you see not only row, if you see the, so you can see IPNB files looks like this. So you generally write your code in a small div, uh, division, I mean div, a small div. And it, if you click, if you do shift enter, then it will automatically run this code and go to the next cell. So there will be cells and you have to just shift enter and it will automatically create new cell, cells. and uh, you can actually uh, write your ent entire code into this kind of files. So either you can run a Jupyter notebook inside your computer, or you can use Google Colab, or one more options are there like Kaggle. So if you go to kaggle.com, it will also give you similar kind of, uh, I mean, notebooks. So, so if you see uh, notebooks, so uh, yeah, one more thing, if you are into machine learning, then Kaggle is a really wonderful I mean, uh, platform for you guys. You can learn a, tons from, a ton, ton of things from Kaggle. You can see this is also a, a interactive uh, Python uh, file. So here you can see cells are there and the results are also stored. So yeah, so this is what an IPNB file is. So basically, when you go to Google uh, collab.research.google.com, you will be greeted with this screen. You won't be having this recent options because you never opened a Google Collab. So first thing, you have to click on New Notebook. And when you click on New Notebook, uh, basically, uh, when you click on the New Notebook, it will uh, automatically open up this page. So you can see uh, New Notebook. This page will open up. And uh, you will see it will have first uh it will have a first cell with nothing in it so i'll say i'll tell you how to uh i mean yeah how to use this cell and all so when you open this notebook you have to see whether it is connected or not if it is not connected you can connect it so one more thing very important thing you have to know is uh, this runtime and uh, whenever you are doing some kind of deep, le deep learning operations before even you are you run the code you have to convert this to gpu or tpu so what is this gpu and tpu is these are the uh, accelerators and uh, these are used for doing metrics uh, i mean these are do, do, used for doing kind of uh, some kind of uh, metrics manipulation so i mean if you are doing a deep learning uh, I mean, if you're writing a deep learning code, generally what we do, we, uh, we, uh, we do 
a huge amount of uh, matrix cal calculations and uh, yeah so it it in gpus are really very eff efficient in doing such kind of thing so yeah so you have to select gpus before writing a deep learning code and in case you are using tensorflow instead of pytorch so basically there are multiple uh, frameworks tensorflow pytorch and all so so you will not know what is uh, what will be like what is tensorflow or pytorch for now just i'm explaining you the uh, collab thing so whenever you are using tensorflow you can use tpu so tpu are accelerators which are optimized for uh, tensorflow so it's not an open source accelerator so you won't find it for your own computer so that's why only you can use this tpu in google servers or inside your collab repository collab environment so so for me i will won't be doing any kind of gpu operations today so i'll be selecting here none and cancel it because it's already selected none so initially it won't give you any so when you start the runtime the selection will be none okay so you have to select depending upon your use cases now one more thing is like you have to connect your drive for uh, using the data from your drive so how to connect this data data from your drive it's very simple uh, you have to mount the drive so when you click on mount drive it will tell, it will tell to connect drive so when you go to the connect drive it will ask you to click on the uh, user which you want to connect so when you see that uh, when you click on mount drive either it you will be uh, it will be automatically mounted because uh, the the uh, python sorry uh, the, this thing like the interactive uh, this notebook is connected to my this account and my drive is also connected to this account so i didn't have any other uh, questions i mean if you see if i unmount this okay so if i un unmount this okay so basically and uh, i tried to access the different accounts drive so if i click on this mounting connect to google drive okay it automatically connects to my this drive so i don't know how like it's not connected to other drive but when you connect to the other drive you will be given uh, options to enter 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 a uh, key so that key and all you can directly click on a link and generate the key and paste it so basically right now it didn't require any key because the notebook account and the drive account is same so yeah once you connect the drive you will see this folder is connected so uh, i mean whenever you are doing some kind of uh, data analytics or you are doing some kind of operations on data so whenever you kind of do some kind of data analytics and operations on data so you have to connect this drive otherwise uh, i mean you won't be storing the result of the data uh, because if you store the result of the data in this runtime whenever you are log logged out from this environment it will automatically get deleted so uh, you have to keep in mind that if you are doing any kind of operations which needs the result to be stored in a file you have to mount your drive remember that if you don't mount your drive and you store the result in this environment which gives you 76.72 gb uh, then your data will be automatically deleted so yeah remember that and uh, one more thing is like yeah once you connect the mount the drive you can access the drive from here and whatever data you want to access so right now okay I have no uh, CSV files here, so I can't ex uh, actually show you some data. But in order to connect this data with your collab environment, uh, I'll show you by um, uploading the data into my drive. So I'll open my drive, and uh, it will take a bit time. Yeah. So my so this is my drive, and basically you can create a new folder you guys already know how to create a folder so i i don't need to explain you so i'll create a folder name is data and uh, when i create this folder you can get inside this folder and upload your data so i'll upload a file 
as a sample. So, uh, yeah, I'll upload a JSON file. Okay, JSON is in a uh, file format uh, used by uh, all those people in, uh, so in case you are doing some kind of website development, you already might be familiar with the JSON data. It's a dictionary or a, so JSON data are nothing, it's a dictionary type. So it has a key and a value, key and a value, that's it. It's not too confused. This this has many data, so it might look confusing, but it's a it's a key and value, key and value. It's like a dictionary. So yeah, don't con get confused by it. So and if you refresh it and uh, you will see the data folder has been added. And if I click on this and uh, copy path. So what, what is copy path? Basically, if you want to access the data, you have to copy the path of that data file. So you have to copy the path. And uh, for right now, you don't have to know what is pandas and all. I'm just using the data uh, to show you how to import it. Import pandas as pd. So don't, you don't have to know what is going on here. So you leave all those things. And I'll show you how to just use the file format. That's a file path. So yeah, for using the file path is equal to data. Is equal to. So I'm reading the JSON. So as you can see, you just have to provide the path, and it will automatically fetch the data. So that's how. Like you want to use the drive, you can use the path from this. Uh, I mean, from this, from this option. So you can copy path and use it. So that's how you use this folder thing. So yeah, this folder thing is covered. Now I'll go to the sample code. In case you want to uh, use some samples. So for example, uh, there are multiple things which doesn't support here. But if you run, in, if you run these things into your system, so let let us remove this thing because it will can okay. Okay, so let it be there. You don't have to understand what is going on into this, these two things. Just tell, just for showing how to import this data. So I did this coding. Now the next next thing is uh, in some of the code won't be running uh, into this uh, I mean collab environment because this is not connected to your hardware. So if you run this uh, some code, Python code easily runs in your system. Um, but it won't run in this collab environment because this collab environment is not directly connected to your hardware. You are using someone else's hardware. So basically, you want to use uh, some of the code like camera captures and all those things. You can't do like simple, so simple things to capture the camera. So yeah, so you can see for that purpose. So the request now is not allowed by the agent in the platform in the field. Okay, so I'll just okay. Basically, it's not your system. Okay, so you are using uh, others, others, uh, others computing resources. So you don't have access to their cameras and all. So for that and all, you have this um, code snippets. So this would help you how to solve those kind of problems. And you can also try out some snippets like this. Uh, you want to, uh, all those snippets and all will be there. So basically this snippet shows you how to make an interactive graphs and all those. So this and all will cover it up later. So whatever code snippets you want, you can actually search here and uh, you can get it from here. So other thing is like table of sections. So this is a very important thing because uh, whenever you are doing a coding, uh, your code becomes very uh, long. So in that case, you just can't go from one place to other. So for that, we have this uh, text. So this text is in uh, MD file format. So what is an MD markdown format is a kind of a writing of, a, so it's a kind of a format where you actually use their own schema for writing text. So for example, if you want to write a uh, h1, so you know h1 in HTML, right? So h1 means the head, heading text. So if you want to write h1 text, then you have to use one hash. So yeah, if you want to use h2, two hash, and give a space, and give whatever, like, um, 
Hello. Okay, so someone just. Okay, cool. No issues. So if you see, if you want to. Okay. So if you want to write the heading or h1, h this is h2 text. So you write it using this two hash. So I'll write here that this is my Python ba Python basics. So yeah, Python and basics. Okay. So you will see that there this these things will be converted into h1, and uh, yeah, and you will see these sections will be created. Now if I go down and write one more text. So basically, this is my small code part. I'll 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 write one more text. I'll show here. Uh, use so I'll h3 use uh, file path example so you see that sections one more section will be created so yeah and uh, one more thing is like you have to use sections for making your code very press i mean very modular so now i'll use uh, uh, like basics so basics of python so so right now uh, right now my code is small so i can easily go from this cell to this cell and you, in case in future you have a big uh, if you have if you have a long code from moving from one cell to other cell becomes very difficult so for that case you have to use this uh, I mean, this text segments. So when you do this thing, your cells are hidden. So it makes your code really, really small. So whatever the code here, it makes it really small. So next thing is like you have to move up and down these cells. So in case you want to move it up and down, you can move it like that. And you want to delete it, delete from here itself. Uh, yeah, and one more thing, how to run these cells are really simple. You have to click on the cells and use shift enter. So it will automatically go to the next uh, cell, running the previous cell. And uh, yeah, so you can see it, it does shift enter. And uh, in case you want to you want to create a new, you don't want to go to the next cell, you can use control enter. So control enter does the uh, process, uh, it runs the cell, but it doesn't go to the next cell. You can see I'm clicking here and I'm pressing click enter, uh, sorry, control enter. So it doesn't go to the next cell. So that's how you can run the that cell itself and uh, don't go to the next cell. And uh, yeah, and this is what we did. And yeah, yeah, so it's done. Right now, everything is done. So this part you don't have to understand, just understand how the file has been, file has been used. So. Uh, this part. So one more thing. So this file, you this file, you won't won't be accessible if the drive is been. So if I share it to you, so you guys, if I share it to you guys, then the thing is, so basically, if I share this to you, then you guys uh, can't access the file because the file whatever is uh, accessible from here it's from my drive so you guys can't access the file from my drive so you can't actually run this code you have to change this path by clicking on uh, some other files so, yeah that's what you have to do now i'll minimize this code because this is not important like right now we can come back to our python basics so you might be knowing so you have to define variables and all those things so we'll go in a proper order i'll uh, Okay, already I have mentioned this book is a really great book and uh, you pretty much can automate your day-to-day -day life tasks. So I'll watch on this, uh, what is this in this Python basics? Yeah, so in case you want to define this uh, variables, you can use like this, age, Okay, age and so yeah, so here you can see three types of variables are defined. First one is string type, 
and second one is age and third one is height so how now you can see you don't have to define the data type like in other cases uh, like if you are using uh, java or if you are using uh, kind of c++ you have to define the type like you have to define in or you have to define the data type but here in this case you don't have to define it so in order to know what type of data it is you have to use type so type is a function inbuilt for python using which you can get the type of this data format so so yeah yeah and uh, yeah so float age and what i did i didn't use print command that's why it only printed the last one so someone just texted string okay float integer yeah so basically when you do this uh, use this interactive python console the last part of this command actually prints so you have to make sure that not only the last part all the parts prints so you can see that if i write now if i do the print command then you will see everything will be printed so yeah it shows string int float yeah so you pretty much got the idea how to actually uh, define the variable uh, and now the next part is uh, what how can you use uh, some operators so operators using are the same uh, in this case also in case you are using uh, equal to equal to Uh, greater than equal to this all are same in this things also so we will write a small if h equal to j is equal to 18 so uh so yeah one more thing you can define uh, you can define the boolean values so you have to uh, so so in this python we use a uh, kind of a underscore uh, format so whenever you are using any kind of variable so in case of java you generally have seen that people use uh, camel cases so uh, if gaming and all is gaming if he knows gaming or something he uses camel cases so the variable names are written in first let first letter of the variable a small letter and then it is a capital letter whenever a new words comes so but in case of uh, in case of uh, python you have to use underscore format so what is an underscore format uh, you have to use underscore whenever a new word comes so in case you can see uh, so in case you have some kind of boolean value so you can actually use underscore and uh, yeah you can uh, in case you want to use boolean value in other cases uh, you have small letter first word first letter should be a small letter but for python the first letter should be capital letter uh, so yeah so basically you can see you can define the boolean boolean value very easily and uh, these are the um, yeah so this you don't have to use this curly braces so without using this curly braces you have to make this if statement so you have to use this colon uh, and uh, you have to give an indentation so if if you enter it will automatically gives it automatically gives the indentations and uh, you can actually write your own code there itself so yeah you can see that Mm. now it will automatically uh so it will automatically check whether my age is more than 18 or not and yeah so one more thing about this is uh, uh you can write elif statements uh i mean if else statements so uh, right now i have used only if statement and uh, so i'll write in elif statement so i'll write age and 
yeah so basically i mean and yeah one more thing whenever you use uh, in different in different uh, languages in order to write write and you use this kind of thing and or you use this kind of thing so yeah but in this in this languages you can use this kind of thing also i mean this kind of uh, characters or you can use and or or so it's like a uh, english letter letter so it's easier also so you don't have to uh, use those symbols in, in, instead you uh, instead you have uh, instead you can use those things so yeah so and uh, for writing elif else if, else if uh, statement so you can write else if like that or in short form you can write elif so and uh, so you don't have to pretty much give a brackets also without giving bracket also it works and uh, and so yeah so you can write and Okay, so basically, uh, you can. Okay, so I just and is not. So we here for uh, for other languages, you use this exclamatory sign uh, to get the inverse of the. I mean, to get the inverse of any boolean. So if it is exclamatory or false, it is true. So if you see, if I put exclamatory or false. uh it will return me through so basically yeah okay it gives me a bash okay so basically okay so okay this is showing me error because there is one thing i'll explain you later i'll tell you about this things but the, the uh, yeah you have to use is not so is not does what it does is check whether this thing uh is true then it will convert to false and then tell you false so if you see then so because it doesn't runs the second command because the first command is run and so yeah you can see it's not defined so okay, i've run this code so once you run this code and you can see this if else statements work so yeah uh, now you can go to the next thing and uh, for, so for it's like for or you can use or or uh, and uh, you can use and not is for the exclamatory sign for other languages and uh, yeah this much you have to know about the if else statement and elif statement now the next else you can use else also so yeah basically else statement runs whenever the all those if uh, conditions doesn't works so then yeah i mean uh, okay so basically when my age is 17 okay is to I really just you know. 
Yeah, so you are in, so when this condition doesn't run, it goes to the else statement. So yeah, that's how you make your own uh, if else statements. Now the next thing is uh, functions defining. So how do you define the functions? Okay, let's see whether I'm going in a proper order or I'm just jumping to these functions. Uh, okay, yeah, now string, the parsing of these variables. So if I make a new text and I write, so parsing. So parsing of the variable, okay, what do So passing of the variables. So if you want to convert this uh, height into a integer, so you can use height int this command. So it converts into an integer. And if you run this height int, uh, if you print this height int, you will see you will get an integer that will be the floor value of that integer. Now, in case uh, you want to get the ceiling value, uh, I mean, and you want to get the ceiling value of that, you can use math So okay, next thing is like okay. Let me bus, let me just show you this thing. And uh, from float to from in to float, you can use float. So you can do such kind of thing. So now I'll copy. I'll convert my age into a float. So you will see it will automatically get convert. It automatically gets converted to that. Uh, this is not good looking. Uh, if So yeah, parsing is done. So that's how you convert. And if you want to convert into string, so you can write string and convert into string. So that's how you do the first parsing. And we'll go to the next thing. Okay, this automatically. What is the next thing? Okay, okay. This are all. So you can get this. So this operators and all you might already, uh, you might, you guys already are familiar with. So that's why I'm not explaining you these operators specifically, but if you want to know more about operators, you can go there and see. So operators are generally those conditions, uh, which uh, the condi you put some conditions into your variables and not. So that's the operators. Uh, conditions and all, so you can. If else statements. Mm. So all this I have explained. Yeah, for taking inputs from your take inputs from your user. So in, in case you are writing any code, so you want to take input. So how to take input is like uh, so my favorite color. So I'll use input. So input is a function which is uh, used to take input. What is your favorite color so yeah so this will automatically ask ask me what is your favorite color and it will like uh, take that as an input so now you can see i can print color and uh, it will give me the blue so the parsing inputs are done and we'll go to the next thing So next thing is, uh, is uh, just, 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 just. everything almost covered. So mm, this, this thing is covered. So you go to the next thing. Okay, define, call, pass, argument parameters. So this thing is like really important because whenever you write code, you generally don't write the entire code into a single place. So you generally define multiple functions. So in Python, you also have to define multiple functions. And that's where this comes. So 
how to define a function for other languages if you want to define a function you define it using func function keyword so but in python if you want to define a function you have to write def okay and then write the function name what you want to give it to that function so for me i will write a function for what shall i do okay write a function for making a circle what function any example we'll see okay write a function for uh, what is this what it does Okay, write a function for playing rock, paper, and scissor. So rock underscore paper scissor. So this is how you write uh, define a function, and you don't have to give any curly braces. You can actually give a colon and go to the next line. So that's how you define a function. Uh, inside this, uh, you can pass uh, arguments. You can pass argument inside these functions very easily. Parameters. So I'll pass it the uh, your selections. Uh, what do you select? Rock, paper, or select? So I'll write a cell because this cell will be the things you will be selecting. So I'll write an if conditions. Before that, uh, I will use. So how and one more thing, how to import libraries. So that is also very important. I'll cover it up before this. And yeah, importing libraries, or in case you want to use the libraries of someone else who have made that library, you can use that using import function. So if you see import uh, random as import. So yeah, uh, import is done using import function. Import is uh, you can import any library, whatever you can we want to import very easily. So you can import like math library. Math library has different kind of functions. Uh, like you can uh, do my power functions. You can do like little bit complex functions uh, will be there. So. so you can write like this, or you can actually in if in case. Uh, you, your uh, your name of that library is large. You can use a shorter name for that. So for that, you can use import m as empty. So whenever you import math as empty, you can use empty as the name of that library. So later on, you can use empty for referring that library. Now, I want to import ra random. As Andy, so. That's how you import the random library. Now, I'll select AI. Rd dot random int. So I'll print that AI. Yeah. Okay, so I'll print that AI select, and in order to run that function, you have to use this. Uh, yeah, you have to call those functions similar to this, similar to your other languages where you want to call your function. You 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 just write that function name and give two brackets. So you just call your function positional argument cell. Okay, I will select one. Missing one required arguments B. Okay, it should give you zero to three. I guess yeah, it selected one. So you can see it will do random selections. So I want to select from zero to two. So and uh, yeah. And also remember, whenever you are defining a function, and if if you don't have anything inside your function. And if you run that, it will give you a syntax error. So.
So that's why if you don't have anything in a function, you have to use pass command. So pass is generally giving a pass to that function and not do nothing to that function. So remember, whenever you are using uh, yeah, so you have to use pass command. Okay, so remember that. Yeah, and uh, also one more thing. Yeah, once you are selecting, uh, you are your AI already selects anything, so you can write your if else statement here itself and tell them whether they won or not. So, so I'll write simple statement. If is cell type and let's consider zero as rock one as paper and uh, s as scissor so A rock, paper, and scissors. So, yeah. So basically, rock, rock, rock. Okay, okay, okay. If AI select. is zero and uh, your selection All right proper your Is also zero. Mm, if your one is rock, uh, before that, I'll put the function. And if AI selects uh, your selection is greater than AI. So <clears throat> your selection is less than lost, and uh, this will be a list. I'll take it up. Okay, select is zero, lock. So you can see I wrote this rock paper scissor code. Now I'll select one and see what happens. You lost. I don't know what AI selected. So I'll print the AI select AI select.
okay ai selected <clears throat> so ai selected zero and uh, i selected one so ai selected zero ai is your selection type ai selected zero and you i selected and okay i have to give and yeah so here i selected one type and if i write you won you lost because uh, if you consider zero as uh, rock uh, stone, uh, like uh, yeah zero as rock paper is one and uh, two two as scissor so in that you will see this will be one so one more thing i'll explain you about that dictionary thing so in python you have uh, uh, if you want to know about uh, data data structures or uh, how the data are i mean collected from any uh, servers or anything like it is correct, collected as a json format so json format can be easily converted into dictionary so yeah if you see what is a dictionary dictionary is nothing it's a json thing only just you have to uh, uh, i mean so it will have a key value pair okay so my dictionary equal to uh, it will have a key value so this is the key and you this is the value so remember whenever you are using dictionary it will it opens up with the uh, curly braces and it has a key and it has a value remember that so in case you are handling data your data will come as a key and value pair and the data will be in a array format so it will be a dictionary's array so uh, i mean if you see the data that is received from the server so in case you don't know what uh, dictionary i'll show you some small example so the data whichever you receive from the servers or anywhere you receive in a dictionary format so here you can see it has a key and a value key and a value key and a value so similarly in python also there is a data uh, it's there a kind of a structure where you can actually uh, define the key and the value so i'll define two so okay one more thing the, uh, the your uh, your variable okay you should give a comma uh, always remember you have to pro give a uh, comma whenever you are defining a new uh, element in that dictionary so yeah so you can see defining a dictionary is really easy just give the dictionary a name give a curly braces a key and a value comma next element key and a value key and a value so that's how you define the dictionary and uh, you can print here what you have selected uh, okay you so whenever you want to uh, append one more string into it into your own string uh, you can use make it a capital letter just to look cool whenever you want to append a string into your previous into some other string so you can use uh, i mean plus symbol for appending that so we'll do that only uh, so you will be using my dictionary you, in order to access the data in your dictionary you have to use this uh, this uh, like this you have to access like this uh, but i want to access the same thing but i want to uh, access using my selection so i'll convert that to string and i'll convert that to my selection so yeah so so yeah so you you were using the dictionary so you selected paper ai selected caesar so you lost so that's true so you can see how ai is being used for creating this small program 
and you selected paper ai selected scissor so you can see you just made a ai game you selected paper ai selected draw so you won so that's how you create and uh, you define it uh, you define a function you define a dictionary you define uh, you use pass and you use elif statement so that's how you do it so with this today's session i want to wrap it up because everything i don't want to give it give it to you guys in a single day and it might be confusing for you guys but if you have a look into this uh, collab repository uh, collab uh, i mean if you want if you give a look into this notebook you will get you will get an understanding of all those things what i have explained to you so in case you have any questions just start asking me in the chat sections i'll be answering those questions so please uh, ask me some questions so that i feel like you guys got something from this so yeah i'm waiting for a questions hello okay well structured collab notebook is this a questions or is an appreciations i am not getting but yeah this is a well structured collab notebook so that's how you structure your collab notebook and uh, yeah you can see i can uh, the entire code is in a single uh, cell so that's how it looks it looks cool so i'll share you the um, link also after that you can also have a look into this any other uh, questions so i'll share in the group also and also i'll share you the video of today's session the people who have not come uh, can watch okay welcome uh, thanks for attending today's session if you have any questions just shoot out if you have any questions any doubts regarding this that and uh, any anything regarding this you can ask me if you feel if you don't have any doubt then it's cool uh, okay we'll go through the assignments which i have provided to you guys so and uh, we'll see whether how much you can do uh, how much you can do from that assignment so let's open up the assignment yeah 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 so the first question is for uh, write a program that does the following ask the user to enter the name yeah that you can use inputs so you can use inputs for asking the user their uh, name ask the user their ages okay tell them whether or not they are eligible to apply for the driving license it's like similar to this code just you have to change it you are and you are eligible for getting driving license okay so in case you are not familiar with algorithms then vectorial and all will be difficult okay wait uh, let me see whether i can cover it up or not uh, so next question is like you have to uh, do a pascal triangle so what is a pascal triangle basically a pascal triangle is the uh it's it's a form of a triangle where you basically add up the previous uh two digits and the middle digits is formed so for example you can see uh i mean the assignments which i have provided was uh, not in a proper order so i'll define the pascal triangle uh, here itself so okay let me show you pascal triangle in the github i mean in other other this is pascal triangle so basically you can see this two addition if you do you will get this element and this two addition if you do you will get this element this two addition this element this two addition this element this two addition this element uh, okay so you have to make a pascal triangle where if you give the n that means the uh, nth uh, that means the row number uh okay so if you give the row number uh if you consider this is a uh, i mean rows so if you give the row number uh then you should 
draw this pascal triangle into your uh, i mean into your collab environment so you have to write a simple code uh, in in where you have you have to add the previous two elements uh, so you have to use lists i mean with lists you have to define this and wait i'll i'll give you a brief idea and then uh, it will be easier for you so let's make a small pascal triangle so basically define draw so this assignment i have shared you in the group so you can have the look on this assignment and try to finish it up as soon as possible and uh, be before the next session so that i uh, i can uh, actually understand that you have got what i have explained in today's session so if you have any doubt you can ask me in the uh, whatsapp i mean you can directly ping me and i, will, I can help you out so this is the and i have passed into my uh, into my uh, this function so first thing is i don't have to do anything just i'll print one uh second thing is like <clears throat> uh i have to store an array okay so basically yeah i'll store an uh, uh, list so i didn't explain what a list is so a list or nothing it's an array only so my list so basically my uh, if you see list are just an array uh the difference between list and array it's like in, in the implementation part you don't have to know because uh, in array you have to predefine uh, the elements type and it has you have to define the length of the array so that's the major difference between a list and an array so in list you don't have to define the element that will be used in this list and you don't have to define the uh, length of that uh, that list so it's very flexible that's why people use lists and also the thing is lists are not the data uh, the uh, lists are not similar to an array in array you do some kind of everything will be in a stack and you can actually uh, access the array very easily but in list lists are uh, the elements are connected through some kind of uh, Uh, i mean there will be links links formed between the list so that's why uh, in order to access a list element it takes little bit more time than an array so yeah so how to define list is like so i'll define list as 1 comma 1 i'll create one more function okay 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 Okay, define print list. Okay, I didn't explain about range. Also, I'll explain it in the later uh, tutorial. Uh, I mean, range is a simpler. I didn't explain the for loop. Sorry, that that is a very important thing. I'll explain it right now itself. So, if I pass my list, just I'm using camel cage. I have a habit of using camel cage. I'm using that. Uh, but in python you should use underscore it's good for using that uh yeah so for using for loop you can use for uh i so for i in range so what is a range function so i'll explain about the range also it will be useful for you guys so range is a function which is used to create a list of uh yeah i'll make a list now let's leave this range is a function where you can put the start and the uh, so you can see here you can put start range uh, start stop and stop so you can put the start and stop so i'll put the start and stop and it will give me a list of all those things so so this will give me a list of all those elements so you can see that in range it starts from 0 it ends till 9 so remember that whenever you are giving a stop in uh, range the elements in that list won't stop at 10 it will stop at 1 minus of that stop 
value. So you can see it starts at zero and ends at ten. So you have to use range in this. So for this, I'll be directly uh, I'll be directly using my list. So I don't have to make a list of uh, make a list of that numbers because I have already been given by a list. So I'll use my list and I'll print i. So 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 easy. It's very easy. Now I'll print. Uh, okay, my list. So you can see draw Pascal. Ah, uh, yeah. So you can see this. Why does it print my list? It should not print list. Okay, 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 there is an issue. Okay, so printing in a single line. So that's an issue of printing in a single line. For right now, I, I, there is one more thing which you can use separator. And end. So basically, by default, end is uh, this thing, new line. That's why whenever you create a new print, you generally create it in a new line. So, but when you do by, by by default, it is separator is nothing. I mean, it's separator means whenever you do printing of two elements like i and comma one uh, string. So you will see if I print that. So i comma string is separated by a uh, this thing. So if I use this as a separator, okay, I'll, uh, I'll remove i. And I use a separator as i. So, so you can see I love pandas, I love pandas. And I love Python also. So I'll again write Python. So yeah, so you can see separator is this. And what is an end is that in case you want to print both of them into a single line. So you can uh, actually use end. So give a separator of this. Don't do this. So basically, you can see both the element is printed in a single line. So you don't have to define separator because there are no both two elements in this. Yeah. So yeah, you see it prints in the single line. So that's the difference between separator and end. And now we'll go to the next thing. Uh, we have to define a okay. So as I have already mentioned, it's you have to now uh, get this triangle and print it out. So it's you have to put okay. You put little bit of your if you don't know how to do it, I'll explain it in the next session. But uh, you guys try it out. Try to form this triangle and print it out. So I have already explained how you can print it out and how you can iterate through a array. Now you can actually iterate through this array and form one more array and change this array into that. So basically, yeah. OK, one, zero. Mm -mm 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 -mm. OK, so I will tell you that I, I can do it in a single line but uh, i will suggest that you guys go and try it out and uh, okay so guys you go and try it out and uh, show me the code i mean share me this code directly by going into share and you can share me directly into our email id this email id or you can actually click on the share by a link and copy the link and share it to me right now it's already one hour and 10 minutes so i don't want to extend more than uh, fifth, uh, one hour so but it got extended more than that 
try out that code it's very easy i'll tell you what to do you have to iterate this array take the first element and keep into the array uh, and you have to push this adding these two and you have to push in the between so you have to iterate this through array uh, first element second element you have to add and push this into this element list so that's how you have to do it and try it out if you have any doubts you can ask me and if you can't solve i'll show you it in the next session so yeah all right then cool if you have any doubt ask me in the chat section and thanks and one more time how to explain create okay explain how to create markdown okay so how to create markdown markdown files are generally the files uh, which are used for defining the documentations of your code so if you see the github repository any anything so any github repository if you go like not this so if you see the github report okay so not this also so basically any github repository if you go it, it, the repository's documentation will be defined in a markdown file so markdown file is basically a file where you define the documentations and uh, you can see in the readme dot uh, that you can see i have made it markdown file and if you see that the markdown file is nothing it's a file where i use hash for my headings and two hashes for h2 and this is a small uh, way of writing a link so but for writing a link here you can use the uh, i mean if you see this there will be option for writing a link so if you go here and do this it will tell you how to paste the link and all so you can also write the link you can add an image by giving this click uh, by clicking on this button so you can do pretty much many things so you can define tables and all these items and all so this will create a list and uh, yeah it's similar to the html but in a form of a text so yeah markdown files are generally used for documentations and here also i have used markdown for, for properly uh, i mean for making the code look uh, good so yeah i don't like uh, people writing code into a very confusing manner so whenever i write code i write it in some in, in a way where that if a new person comes and reads the code he understands what's what's going what is going on in this thing so that's how i make write code so you guys also follow the same order same trend and uh, yeah and uh, once you write the code submit into my email and i'll 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 see i'll review that and i'll answer you uh, and i'll i'll make sure that every one of you submit before the next session and if you can't submit i'll keep a session where i'll explain the uh, assignments all right then uh, with this i will wrap it up thanks for joining me i mean you know, this uh, early morning generally people don't wake up even i myself wake i myself wake up at uh, 11:30 or something but yeah thank you for your effort and all like almost everyone has attended today's session and i hope today's session was little bit informative for you guys and similar sessions i'll be conducting in future and uh, please don't uh, bunk these sessions okay thank you thank you everyone so with this i will wrap it up see you up in the next session all right and yeah one more thing whoever submit first will get a i mean he will get an endorsement in the linkedin so just make sure that you guys uh, so whoever submits first will get an endorsement uh, so try to submit as soon as possible i'll make sure that okay okay the last thing is submit uh, as soon as possible whoever submit first will get an end endorsement of python in linkedin so i'll endorse you in linkedin and uh, which will be useful for you all right cool then uh, see you bye